Hello everyone, I am a Silent Death, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, Science Harder Campaign. Today, we are back with a dynamic Duno, and we're in a bit of a time crunch. We have nine days until our Moho transfer window. But, travel time there is 156 days, which will mean that they will arrive before our stuff arrives at Eve and Gilly. We don't yet have an Explore Moho contract, so what I'm hoping is if we explore Duna and Ike, finish those two, we will get the Moho contract, otherwise, we're going to have to wait until the next transfer window. Which is not good, because we're counting on exploring Moho to give us the explore dress contract. So we need to go land on Duna right away. We'll do a little bit of a takeoff here. We're already tilted in the right direction. So, in a five. Four, three, two, one. Lift off. Gear can retract. Maybe. There it goes. Need to pitch way over. A little bit too far. Just straighten out first. Apple Apps is already at 7k. Hold it right there. What, 92? A little bit further down then. Hopefully don't run out of fuel or anything. Really kind of hard to control this. Periapsis is climbing. And there goes all the fuel in that stage. Which is either a good or bad thing. We still have enough thrust to wait, so we should be okay. Alright, let's do a little bit of fast forwarding. The bats are having a little bit of a difficulty. Dragging the dynamic Arduino up into orbit. They have half the thrust since that main stage ran out of fuel. taking a lot more fuel than I had originally planned to get all this done. 
And we've run across a little bit of a problem here. It appears that Ike is tilted relative to Duna. So even though we kind of are close to the equator, the equator of Ike is actually like about a 45 degree angle from Duna. Which means we're going to have to waste even more fuel doing a bit of a plane change burn. 63 meters per second, 63 meters per second for that. Not cool. And we did it out at the farthest node, giving a whole nother orbit, just because it's cheaper that way. Then a little bit of an air break. Shooting for 75 kilometer orbit, that's above 60 kilometers, which is the 50 times warp cutoff, but not so far that we have to use a whole bunch of fuel when we're, whatever it is we're doing, landing and taking off, there's a nice shot while the light's on, getting a whole bunch of science as we dip to the top of the atmosphere. Not sure why we didn't get the science last time when we dipped through the atmosphere, did the first air breaking. But this time, all the atmospheric canal stuff is coming along. Lots and lots of science. Trying to get it just right. Little nudge, some more air braking. We're going perpendicular to the surface. The wings are perpendicular to the surface in the hopes that that'll make Trajectories a little bit more accurate. I miscalculated my trajectory though a little bit, so I'm trying to slow down by going completely vertical. What it is, I was using the satellites, the short range satellites, as a kind of guide, and I was thinking those were at 50 kilometers, but they're not. And they're hard. I think they're at 89 kilometers, in fact. Which is a small mistake on my part. After we get the station in orbit, we now have, to give it some fuel, want to make sure the bats are both fueled and have plenty of extra fuel in the tank before we send anyone down drop off the heat shield since we apparently don't need those here. I don't recall how much Delta V the bats have and how much they need to land and take off. I can't remember if I designed them to be able to do two trips or just one. I want to say two, but I'm not going to risk it. So we're doing a little bit of an arrow break with that. Of course, with the no wings and everything, it's a little bit easier. It's having some power issues. It doesn't have a whole lot of battery power. And it keeps running out at an opportune times. Coming through, looks like for another air break. Trying to conserve power by turning off the SAS. Looks like we're almost through. And there we are. 
we are at Apple Apps is uh, 78k where our station is at 75k <clears throat> much improved save as much fuel as possible because we're going to need all of it since we lost the other refueler to a bug Now it's just some um, fiddling here and there using uh, the purple alarm clock to help us figure out how much we need to burn. So 1.8 kilometer separation. And then just kind of moving the retrograde marker around. Opening up the docking port. And having to be a little bit careful with our power here since we're in the dark. And I've shut down most of the SAS, all but one of them, to try to save our power. Which is a little bit scary because we almost run into it. And we do. Smack it a little bit. Um, looks like we're getting in the sun now, though. Aligning the roll, then the docking port, and then getting the RCS in. Pretty heavy, so it's kind of hard to shove around. And there that goes. We've sucked all the fuel out of our refueler. Didn't even completely fill up our dynamic Duno and Bats. Really didn't have as much fuel as I thought I did in this. Or maybe we just used way too much on Ike. But as with all space debris, we're going to clean this up by plummeting it into the surface of a duna with a nice satisfying explosion with fuel it is time to launch a bat so we'll take Neil Stead here who's a pilot if I can figure out which thing he's in There he is. You can go over there. And Jin Long, who is a scientist. You can go over there. Do a quick save. And we will... This is not that one. Undock. Already it's telling us that we have science stuff. Because the rest of it's in there. Now then. Let's kind of push off. This way. Let's see what our hotkeys are. Five. Okay, that's not working. Maybe they're not accurate. New. Two works. Three works. Four is the SAS. And I guess just the solar panels don't work, okay? Okay. 
Now then, I guess we could we could get a crew report, but we might want one later. Let's set up a new maneuvering node. Or to land just anywhere in the daylight, preferably somewhere with low altitude. Actually, in that canyon would be pretty good. So we will. And we shoot it a little bit, and then glide the rest of the way. Burn in like now. Yeah, we've already passed our burn. Engines are active. Definitely going to land, it looks like. Alright, that's good enough. <clears throat> We've officially hit the atmosphere. Jean Long and Nilstead are thrilled to be the first people landing on Duna. I wish it knew that we already had this stuff in another, another vessel. Would be convenient. Midlands? Just kind of glide for a little ways. Still the Midlands. Want to get a nice, dick, a nice, deep, thick atmosphere for our wings to work well. Still the Midlands, and there comes Ike. Going fairly fast. Our lands, I don't think we have. So we missed it. I have to wait until we get a little bit deeper. There's some more highlands. Lots of carbon dioxide. The high compressibility and low density might make reentry heat less intense for landers. Still in the upper atmosphere. I don't know when this switches to. I guess we just switched. Yeah, we're flying over. Take a couple of those, take one of those, take a pressure scan, mystery goo, material study, temperature scan. Another material study and another mystery goo. 
The red color excites the goo. Despite the dust storms, they're not, there's not much wind. The scanner indicates that dust, that the dust is incredibly small and needs to blow around. You think you see a face. Maybe it was a trick of the light. No, no, that's a face. The atmosphere is very thin here, but it is enough to register on the instrumentation. The red color excites the goo. The Duna ain't the kind of place to raise a kid. Matter of fact, it's cold as heck. And there ain't nobody there to raise them if you did. You expose the material samples to the environment, taking notes on how it behaves. And that is that. We're going to try to do a little bit of bank here. Line ourselves up with that a little bit. Do a quick save. from flying over the midlands, keep that. A couple of atmospheric analysis, we'll keep those. Then we'll try to pull down and around. Went to kind of a steep dive. while bleeding off a little bit of speed. Not much air still. But we are turning a little bit. Worried we aren't turning fast enough though. Okay, now we're getting deeper in the atmosphere. Pressure's climbing rapidly. Getting some control. And we're lined up just about. Now would be a good time for another quick save. Small problem with the audio there. I will let some bleed off some more speed. Lots more speed. Starting to stall out a little bit. We'll dive down then. Straight down. Get the nice thick atmosphere. up a little bit. A little bit more. Okay. Not right here. We'll just let it kind of settle down on its own. Okay, 
Nice little shoots there. Slowing us down. Alright, so we've landed. Atmospheric pressure scan. The pressure in this basin is a whole notch higher on the scale. EVA. You feel like a true hero as you march across the red planet until you realize you're a long, long way from home. Keep that data. You take a surface sample, hoping to determine if water was once flowing here. Let's see, how well does these jetpacks work here? Well enough. Oh. Plant the flag. Lowlands. The bat has landed. Our first test of our bat lander. We'll get the other guy out to uh, plant a flag. We'll also grab some stuff and stick it in the cockpit. And I will be right back. Alright, let's do the rest of this stuff. More atmospheric analysis. The surface pressure seems to vary wildly as the level of car levels of carbon dioxide and water vapor change with the seasons. Report. Dark spots on the surface of Dina were once thought to be the darkness of vegetation growing near the poles as the season change. It is now known that the dark coloration is in fact caused by seasonal dust storms. Material study? Another material study. The sample computer processing the results. The sample computer processes the results. Its massive red eyes uh, seem to be at home here as it slowly, ominously blinks. Okay. That's a little bit creepy. Read that one. That one. Opening the sample container, you find that everything has turned red. Initial tests show that it, it'll never wash out of the white spacesuits. You consider sending missions in pink EVA suits to reduce the clean cloth cost. Um, another one, thanks. Seismic scan. Surface sample. We already got a surface sample. Duna is colder than I expected. Really? Some goo? Strong winds from the surrounding mountains ripple the exposed goo. Says that twice. Instrument detects some faint tremors. Should actually have run twice. Loss of seismic data. Keep that data. I guess I need to change the settings here. Seismic data. Where are you? Two. Stuff, stuff, stuff. There we are. Less than nine percent. Not maxed. Okay, there we go. Now then, we shall close the cargo bay doors. Hell, turn off the brakes. Quick save and get to the hell out of here. Let's find out. where you are. Set as target. 
So I want to wait until he's somewhere like right around here. Maybe a little bit closer. Let's try it now. We have fuel. Lined up. Gear up. Climbing, climbing. Getting some speed. Getting some control. Now we're talking. Go straight up. To the thin atmo. Or mostly up. Guess we can't see our target yet. Still some stuff, so another atmospheric analysis. Another temperature scan. Must have been full when we came up here before. Climbing rapidly. is at 13k rising to the clouds that's a pretty shot right there Ike in the background yeah that's pretty let's turn this back on though so everyone can see Another thing, we must be in the upper atmosphere now. Keep that data. I think we can probably level out a little bit. There we go. A widow. How are we on fuel? We got plenty of fuel. So yeah, this thing can apparently land twice. Though we used up all of our material studies coming down. Just because we had to get the upper atmosphere stuff. level out a little bit more. Might need some RCS for this. Is that our target, maybe? Nope. Haven't caught up with it yet. Out a little bit more. Get over there. Come on. Almost at the right apo. And cut it. 
Professor's approach is still going to be way too far. Hold your position. Okay, so we'll just circularize our orbit. Apo. And that'll probably get us where we need to be. Somewhere. I don't think we're going to go that much. We could do an intercept over in this direction. So we are going too fast. We need to be a little bit bigger. Doesn't look right. Are we... Okay, yeah, we're tilted. I have to take care of that, too. Go just a little bit further apart. And we need to burn in a couple minutes. Maybe we're going to use this to try to hold the node. If we can. We're going to try to go sideways. Yeah, we should still have plenty to catch up with our, with our guy. Their base. Their station. Or whatever. I think I probably have that. But. We'll grab another one just in case. And let's go ahead and rendezvous. Now that we're docked, we just need to finish our contracts. Cover science from space. Recover science from the surface of both Duna and Ike. First, we will need to extend our antenna. We need a curb. Then let's find something to transmit. Review data. We can clean those experiments while you're at it. Answer analysis. No, we'll keep that. Surface sample. EVA report. That's a good one to transmit. Crew report from space. That's also a good one to transmit. EVA report from Duna's upper atmosphere. I'm not sure if that's a good one to transmit or if that... What that counts as? Does that count as surface or space? Let's find out. Transmit that. And we'll keep this one. Plenty of power. Um, we transmitted, but it doesn't seem to have counted for either one. We did get the Ike one, though. Alright, we will... Review stored data. Report from the upper atmosphere. 
Let's tell you about flying, atmospheric analysis, seismic. Haven't got any other the new ones. EVA report from space. That sounds like a good one to transmit. Space. So we just need one from the surface. Hi, Reich. Central. Ike. All these are Ikes. And hey, what about over here? More Ike stuff. Flying over Dunas Highlands. Dunas Highlands. Flying from. Okay, that one's not a good one to transmit. Just above. Surface sample, EVA report from, okay. Yes, this is the one that we want to transmit. And... We also get this one too. So let's hop over to the Space Center and see if that unlocked anything. It appears we are not getting the one we want. We're getting a jewel instead of Moho. What we might have to do... ...is change the time of flight. Instead of the default... Hundred and fifty six days. We'll bump it up so that it comes after the even gilly satellites, which puts us leaving in uh, a while. Another a few months. Which will be well after that arrives. Though that means that our contract to test this on the escape trajectory, we'll have to finish that with a different vessel of some type. Add that alarm. And that should still be before this happens. So that's almost a year away. So, quite a ways away if we do it that way. We have a whole bunch of money and a fair amount of science. I think we're going to go ahead and spend the money and upgrade this. We will hold on to the science for now. And we will end this episode. Like if you like. Subscribe if you're not. Leave a comment if you have anything to say. I do read all the comments. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.